This is going to be a quick video on how to update your old L-Type ESCs to some juicy new 48kHz PWM frequency L-Type ESC firmware. This is all thanks to Joe Lucid, who is of course the developer of JESC. Thanks to him we have RPM filtering um, and you do have the option to buy a license and actually flash your BLHeli S ESCs, which is what my last video was all about. Um, but it was more the Jazz Maverick sort of side of things. But yep. Yeah, Joe Lucid has developed this, it's open source of course, um, it's not flashed through the JESC configurator, we're actually going to use the old school BL Heli um, configurator to set it up. So it's really easy. First thing you're going to do is connect to BL Heli. So I've already got my work plugged in, now this is going to sound different because I've already flashed it, um, flashed the ESC firmware on here. I'm just going to plug in my LiPo, we're going to hit connect and read setup. So the number we're looking for here is the one right here. So my ESCs run OL5, yours might be different but quite a few of them, especially the Crazy B F3 boards do seem to run the OL5. So take note of that, I'm um, going to disconnect, unplug the LiPo, save your VTX and we're going to go here. Now the link to this will be in the description of course. Um, but there's going to be a whole buttload of different ESC stuff um, and you're just going to find the one that matches yours. Be careful, take the extra time here, triple check you've got the right one because you don't want to know how to unbrick ESCs, it's not pleasant. Um, so yeah, L5, we're going to right click on the one we know is correct and you're going to hit save link as. Um, so you're just saving a hex file to somewhere easy to find and I'm just going to put an extra one here to differentiate from another one because I've already got this. As you can see it's just going to look exactly like that, um, easy to find. We're going to come back to BL Heli, connect up again, plug in your LiPo, and hit read setup. Um, so once again I've already flashed this but I will I guess just flash it again it can't hurt. So we're gonna hit flash all, um, select file manually and you're just going to navigate to where this hex file was. Um, so I do have the 24 kilohertz variant and the 48 so I'm just gonna open that one and it's gonna automatically start the flash at this point. Um, so it doesn't take that long, I don't have the magic of editing, so we do just have to make small talk until it finishes, but suffice to say, the best thing about this is that you do get extended flight times, um, arguably cleaner, higher throttle, delivery uh, from the ESCs, but you're also going to lose a little bit of you know, quote unquote talk. So the actual low down power response of the motors, you're going to notice that coming out of dives, so in Acura maneuvers. Um, so I guess this is pointed at uh, people who want to cruise around with the whoops, maybe in stability mode, flying inside. Um, you're going to get increased flight times and you know nicer higher throttle punch outs. But for the Acura whoopers out there, perhaps running the 24 kilohertz version would be better. Um, if you, yeah, it's a trade-off between flight time and punch versus um, just nice raw power, but you know, lower flight times. So as I've been talking out my ass there for about 35 to 40 seconds, we're almost done. Doesn't take long, um, and literally that's it. So once this is finished flashing, you're all good to go. Um, you're going to see it go from 16.7. You might even be 16.6567 on your old ESCs and it's going to change to this 2.3 which is Joe Lucid's JESC L-Type firmware and he is working on it to work with his configurator so it'll be a lot cleaner um, but yeah who cares for now we can still flash it using BL Heli configurator so we're all done um, you can disconnect you're going to hear the different tones I'm just going to unplug the LiPo there because I'm killing that one um, and yeah, you're all done. Now, you can finish here. You, you don't have to upgrade to 4.1 or anything. You don't have to get RPM filtering. In fact, I think it flies really well like this. Um, I was flying with motor stop on, apparently for five days, and I didn't notice it. So I'd accidentally turned that on. 
Um, but yeah, if you do want to upgrade to 4.1, stay on the line for just a little bit, and I'll show you. It's won't show you the the whole kit and caboodle, but it's very easy. So the link to all the information will be in the description. Um, it's basically the Betaflight Performance Edition for F3 boards specifically. Um, and what they've done is just cut out a few unnecessary things which add to the strain on the CPU. RPM filtering is incredibly tough um, on the CPU. So in order to run it successfully on F3 boards, you basically have to overclock. The default overclocking on Betaflight was too much, was too aggressive. So the devs have come up with a very um, special, I guess, specific overclocking um, value, frequency for these F3 boards. Um, all that means is once you flash this hex, um, and of course you have to find the right one, you can run Betaflight 4.1, you can get RPM filtering, and you've also got the benefit of these new L-type ESC firmwares, so it can all work together. Um, so yeah, great news, but I'm going to quickly show you. So of course you don't want BO Heli configurator running when you're trying to flash. Um, we're going to open up Betaflight. I'm already plugged in here, so I'm just going to go connect. And it's going to connect, of course. Now I'm going to show you something really easy. So before you screw around with anything, but whenever you're flashing you kind of have to be careful. You can't brick it. Now, brick and FC, you can certainly make life hard for yourself. So, I get in the habit of doing a dump wall in the CLO. And I've seen some people, you know, um, copy it all from here and p place it into a notepad, but you don't need to do that. You can just go save to file um, and save it to file. So, it's just going to save a text file. I'll just put those on my desktop. You can actually also do a diff all. Now, arguably, a diff all is a lot easier. So it's going to give you stuff like your rates, your you know, your modes, your aux channels, um, your OSD settings, and that's um, easy to easy enough to paste in. But I actually don't like doing that. Um, now, if you were to save this to file again after you've done the diff all, it's actually going to save the dump all in that same file as well. Um, so you can just save both of them in the one file and you can always see where it's split. Um, yes, yeah, so a couple of different ways to do that. That way, look, you're all backed up now. Um, so we can check the version of the board to make sure we're going to get the right target to flash. Now I've got the Crazy B F3 FR. So if we come back to this link here with all the hexes for the different um, F3 boards, come along and see these ones here. Now as you can see they've split them depending on what receiver you're running, um, what protocol you're running. So FlySky, FRSky and Spectrum and Crossfire. Once again that's just to lessen the load on the CPU by taking out unnecessary things in the back end. Um, I'm guessing most of you are going to be FRSky. So it's pretty easy. We're just going to save link as, right click save link as, that's going to give us our hex. Um, so once again you just want to put this somewhere easy. So just going to save that one to the desktop. We are going to come back to Batterflight. We're going to quickly as habit come back in and I always out of habit just check whatever's on my ports tabs. Um, just really quickly, so when you can, you know, when you do flash the next one, the first thing you want to do, come straight in here to beta flight, set up your ports tab, so you're not going to be screwing around later. So I've got TBS Smart Audio there, um, and it's an SPI, so don't have to worry about serial, serial RX. So we're going to disconnect, and we're going to come to firmware flasher, and rather than doing it the normal way, which is loading um, online. Just going to come here, and we don't have to actually worry about that. No, I'm silly. So we're going to go load firmware from local, duh, and just pick this one here. So it's the one we saved before, the X key from before. I'm just going to turn that radio down, and we're going to open. 
So now this is ready to go. You can flash the firmware. I'm actually not going to do that because I've oh no, screw it. I backed up, so it doesn't really matter. And apparently it put it in DFU automatically. That's useful. That was one step I actually just forgot to tell you guys, but apparently you don't need to do that. See? Learning stuff. Yeah, unfortunately, you guys are going to learn something today. Well, um, so that should all be good. So look, we've got our COM port 4 back. Let's just connect. And I've got my fingers crossed now, actually. Yeah, it seems to be all good. Um, interesting. <laughs> so glad you stayed now. That was fun. Uh, minor heart attack. We're all good. So yeah, by the end of this video, you should have learned how to put L-Type on your um, L-Type ESCs, and we've also done beta flight now. So good to go. Uh, any questions? Let me know in the chat. Um, but yeah, done.